Good morning to you and welcome to News 13 New this morning. I'm Matt Morrow. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Alba. Thank you so much for being with us. It is Thursday, October 18th. We're going to get to all your news in just a moment, but first we really need to talk about the weather. Yeah, let's go to meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke. Kristen, those winds going to die down today from yesterday? It will be better than yesterday, but we are off to a breezy start and it's still going to be a breezy day today. Yesterday we saw gusts between 40, nearly 45 miles an hour, even right here in the metro area. And right now we're seeing winds out of the north at 14 miles an hour. So a steady northerly wind. It won't be nearly as windy, but we will keep a breeze with us. 55 degrees, a little cooler out there. And when you factor in the wind, it does feel cooler than that. As we go through the day, more sunshine. 57 degrees at 9 o'clock. We'll be in the 60s at noon. And then today topping out in the low to mid 70s. So a few degrees cooler than yesterday. We're going to see a big cool down across eastern New Mexico and then another one coming up next week. I'll have the details for you coming up. Wildfires are threatening homes in southern Colorado as we speak. More now in your news blitz. Exactly how many inmates have been accidentally let out of New Mexico's prisons early? A new audit is trying to find out right now. Details in four minutes. A little boy who was killed in what police call a drunk driving crash here in Albuquerque is finally laid to rest. And his dad has a message for the man accused of killing him. Hear the emotion in three minutes. A new report could be great news for neighbors who don't want a new Walmart on Albuquerque's west side. We'll tell you how you can give the city your thoughts on this coming up in two minutes. But first, dozens of homes in danger in Colorado right now because of two wildfires that are burning there as we speak. What you need to know and Kristen's forecast for that area starting right now. And happening right now, firefighters are still very concerned about not just one, but two wildfires that are getting dangerously close to homes in southern Colorado. The first is the Little East Fire. It's near Mancus, just north of Durango. It's already burned more than 100 acres and has forced families out of about 40 homes. Then there's the Balacito Fire. It's about 14 miles east of Durango on the west side of the Balacito Reservoir. It's already burned about 250 acres. Firefighters have told families in 20 homes to get ready to evacuate at any moment, and they think that lightning Cause this fire, ladies. Yeah, and let's come back to Kristen here to talk more about the concerns about the winds, especially near the Durango area where we have these wildfires burning. Right. Well, the winds got going so early yesterday morning, and it was a windy day across the four corners. Even here in Albuquerque, we felt the wind, and the winds have died down overnight. So that's the good news. But we're going to be picking back up again, unfortunately, this afternoon. It won't be as windy as what we saw yesterday, but we're seeing a steady wind right now out of the east at about five to ten miles an hour, steady at seven miles an hour up near Durango, and we're going to see mainly an east northeast wind as we go through the morning and then we're going to see it kind of change direction as we go through the day. Relative humidity is still really low, so that's not going to help things out either. But again, the winds won't be as bad as yesterday. We're going to be looking at a north northeasterly wind at about 5 to 10 as we go through 9 o'clock. So lighter winds, temperatures in the upper 30s, no issues there. Temperature wise, of course, no issues will be in the low 60s as we go through the day. For your lunch hour, relative humidity dropping to 15% and we're going to be looking at winds out of the west at about 10 to 20 and then we could be looking at 15 to 25 mile an hour winds later this afternoon. So Winds could be a factor. It does look a little better as we go into the weekend, and there are some showers in the forecast, too. I'll have more details and, of course, your complete seven night coming up. All right, thank you for the update, Kristen. And if you see a fire burning in the Hemis Mountains today, don't be alarmed. That's because firefighters will continue doing a controlled burn there later on. They burned more than 1,200 acres in the Santa Fe National Forest yesterday. Developing news, it could be a huge victory for neighbors around Coors and Montano on the west side later today. That's when Albuquerque's Environmental Planning Commission is set to get a report recommending that it does not allow Walmart to build a super center at that busy intersection. You can share your thoughts on that report at a store at a big public meeting this afternoon. News 13's David Romero is live out on Coors Boulevard in the west part of Albuquerque. So, David, why is this report going to reject the Walmart? Well, Matt, it's not. OK, as you can hear, we have uh, some audio issues with David. What he's saying is that it's uh, not much of a proximity to the Bosque or neighborhood opposition, but access to roads and the design not being pedestrian friendly. That will all be covered at this public hearing that's going on later today. The debate whether or not this big box store should be built on the site here on the west side is going on for more than a year. You've probably heard an awful lot about it. About it. Now, Walmart's representatives say that the plans for the 98,000 square foot store do comply with the city rules, but many people in that area have complained that the store is just going to add to congestion and trash in the area, which is very close to the Bosque and close to the Bosque School. Now, the question from the Environmental Planning Commission is whether that store can have the true full access to Coors. And that goes back to a city ordinance, which says that big box stores must have full access to a major four lane road. That's the rule here in the city. 
The Environmental Planning Commission will be holding that public meeting on the Walmart. It's today at 1 o'clock at the Albuquerque Convention Center. You can go there and give your thoughts. The last community meeting on this proposed Walmart was held uh, back earlier this year. An awful lot of people showed up. Elizabeth? All right, actually, I'm going to keep talking. It's going to be another sad day for a family in Albuquerque after it buried a little boy yesterday, killed in what police say was a drunk driving crash. It's an awfully sad story. And you probably remember little Vicente Griego. He died back in August, a few days after police say Mariano Salas was drunk and slammed into the Griegos' car. Vicente's family wanted to wait until yesterday to bury his ashes. That's when, when Vicente would have turned three. Drunk driving is a big issue. I mean, look what it did. It took my son away. And it's just like, I feel like, this guy is trying to get just get away with it. Who hurt my son? And he killed him, actually. Mariano Salas there has pled not guilty to DWI and vehicular homicide. He is still in jail right now on a quarter million dollar bond. Elizabeth. Police say the suspect arrested for a rash of armed robberies admits he did it. Cops say 22 year old Julio Francia was arrested Monday after police say he held up a subway store near Montgomery and Wyoming. They say he pulled out a handgun on the cashier and demanded cash. Now a subway employee followed him and called 911. APD says Francia is the guy in some surveillance pictures. These right here that were connected to at least 19 armed robberies in the last two months. They were mostly at fast food restaurants and auto zone stores. We are learning that the State Corrections Department has released several inmates by mistake this last year, and that has led to the creation of a new system. That's what a new audit is showing. Corrections Secretary Greg McIntyre tells us that, <clears throat> excuse me, released calculations, mistakes were made on calculating uh, the sentences of many inmates, and they were done by different staff members at different prisons around the state, and that is what was causing a mess. Now, he says he is spending $400,000 to reshuffle his staff to review about 25 thousand inmates who have been released over the past six years. We want to make sure that we're going after those offenders who who we need to be most concerned about. Mark Intel says the audit will take until April at the earliest to be completed. Later today, we could learn if a state legislator here in New Mexico will appeal a fine she just got from the Secretary of State's office. State Senator Mary Jane Garcia here from Doña Ana County got fined $1,200 this week for spending her campaign cash the wrong way 12 different times in the last two years. Campaigns can't actually use cash for anything that costs more than $100. Garcia did, but says it was for legislative meetings, and she thinks that that makes it okay. The University of Phoenix in Santa Fe will soon be closing its doors. The Apollo Group, which owns the university, says declining enrollment has forced the company to shut down 115 schools nationwide. The Santa Fe shutdown will affect about 50 students. The company will provide a place for them to finish their degrees in person or online.